I'm not going to necessarily go through the actual um, Blackboard site too terribly much because I haven't had a lot of changes since my midterm um, showcase. I basically just added more of the same. Um, just real quick, sorry, my name is Kim Parsons. Sorry. Hi, um, I'm the chair of the Dental Assistant and the Dental Hygiene Programs here. Um, this particular course is Human Systems 2. It is a 100 level course and it is the second in a series of two courses. Um, this course is only for my dental assisting students, which makes it a little bit different as far as my design and how I was doing things. Um, it is for a cohort of students who are together all day, every day. They are together Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., sometimes into the evening, depending on their clinical rotations. Um, this is their only online course as well, so everything else they see face to face. Um, and so that affected how I did my interaction and that type of thing. Um, just a little bit of background, my students do take 20 credit hours the semester that they take this, and included in that is 20 clock hours of clinical practice out in dental offices. So they're really busy. They've only had three courses prior to, three college courses prior to beginning my program. Um, so they may not have very much experience at the university level and they're still 100 level courses. So I was trying to keep all that in mind when I was designing it and still making it meaningful for them. Um, this is a course that is required by our accrediting body and it's one that they need for their national board exam that they take at the end of the spring semester. So um, that's my brief intro to my course. As far as student engagement, there's not a lot of student to student engagement in here basically because um, they see each other, they're with each other all the time and it just didn't fit with this particular course. What I do a lot of in this course is I do um, a lot of YouTube videos, much like you had just shown me. Um, and I, I remember you saying you kept them for less than eight minutes. Mm -hmm. So um, basically each week I also do a short introduction video. Um, I've only done my first week so far because each week I plan to record it like on Friday at the end of that week for the following week because I want to recap things that maybe they missed or um, areas that were deficient or that need a little bit of discussing and then move on to my expectations for the week. Each video my goal is to be five minutes or less. Um, my first one is five minutes and we'll see how that goes. Um, but eight minutes is my new benchmark now. Um, so nothing more than eight minutes. But I really want to be able to, basically I want my students to feel like I'm engaged with them and that it's not just a course that I set up in December and then I never do anything with and they're just in there on their own. So I really want to make sure that they understand that um, I am following along with them and their progress and that I'm, that I'm there and helping them however is needed. Um, so really I tried to set it up very um, self-explanatory really and truly. Um, I have my content set up by week and I set up the content for each week much the same way. I'll just pull up one so that you can see. Some weeks there is only one module and some weeks there are two modules that have to be done. So, um, but regardless, each module basically is set up the same way so that, sorry, I'm trying to use this like my Mac and it's not moving. <laughs> um, each module is set up in the same manner so that there are no, honestly, there are no surprises. They know how it's gonna be set up, how to understand it, and what exactly to do. Um, so I did, I'll just show you real quick, I did start with the to-do list at the top of every module to let them know exactly what to do. Um, remind them what resources they need to um, check with before they, you know, start on this Blackboard site. And then, oh, that's a good time, so we'll scroll past that. Um, so I did do an overview video, um, just telling my expectations for the week. And then I usually have three to four um, just short five minute or less clips on different topics from our reading or from our module that I feel are really important to especially hit on. Um, and then underneath those particular topics, I do have um, a way for them to just kind of check their progress and see if they're um, understanding what's going on and if they're really comprehending it. These are not for grades. These are purely just for them to check for understanding. And these are all drag and drop games. Um, that go along with our whatever we're doing for that week. Again, this is human systems, so we go through the body systems. We have a different body system for each module. Um, so it's pretty cut and, pretty cut and dry there. So they are able to, you know, do this and they're able to see if they got the correct answer 
or if they get the wrong answer, um, you know, it lets them know. So they can check and see how much they've really comprehended so far and what they need to go back to um, review some more. I also provide a case study for each particular module. Um, it's actually a case study example. And basically why I do this is because um, I have four assignments throughout the course that are I present case studies to my students and I want to give them the opportunity to really utilize their critical thinking skills and to utilize everything that they've learned um, as far as dental and oral health and then overall total body health and really put those together. And so um, those four assignments are bigger assignments that my students have to do and so I want to give them some examples of what case studies look like and how you would kind of answer those and work through them. Um, Almost every module has a corresponding quiz with it, and the reason for that is because my students do take national board exams, and um, I still need to be able to present them with the types of questions that they're going to see there so they can have practice with those. Um, I have taught this course online before, although really all I did previously was record lectures from PowerPoints and put it up on Blackboard and say, there you go. Um, but I just couldn't part with those because I just couldn't do it. So I did put those <laughs> recorded lectures as supplemental materials, and in my head, I'll just let myself think that people may refer to them. Um, I'll probably have one or two students that will. So I did put just a PowerPoint in an actual lecture that basically goes through our textbook um, to help with understanding if students so choose to use it. The thing that um, I really like about this course is at the end of the course, in the final exam, instead of having a final, they're going to be doing a project where I present them with a case, basically. And um, so I present Larissa with a case, and she is a she is speaking to a 35-year-old male, and he's got this, 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 and this going on, and he's in the dental chair. And then basically they have to do a role play as the clinician, and how would they provide oral health education to that patient, and what would they do? Um, and what we're doing is we're going to be doing that through video. So the students will have their roommate or their mom or someone take a video of them on their phone, um, actually acting out that clinical scenario and providing that oral health education. Um, and I'm really excited about that because to date, we haven't really had a good way to, um, to really assess those critical thinking skills and can they bring everything together from this two series course and tie it all together in the clinical realm where they're going to be. Um, and so I'm using OneDrive for that. So I've divided it into, I don't even know, I'm trying to, um, I've divided it into folders and so what's going to happen is each student will have access to a certain folder. I go back. Um, yeah, I'll try clicking back just a couple more times to go to the my.usi. Okay, go to my.usi.edu. Um, I so basically, you want to give students access to a certain folder that has a case scenario in it, and like two students will have access to each folder. Um, and then, wait, I have to think which one it is. <laughs> um, and then they will be able to access the case scenario through this OneDrive folder, and then they will be able to upload their final project to the folder as well. Um, and so I'm actually just really excited about that. Not on there. That's interesting. Okay, well, we're going to move on to yeah. time safe, but <laughs> it's on my map. That's all I know. Um, UHAN helped me, and we printed out instructions for how to upload, how to access it. It's fabulous. I really adore it. Um, so, there's not a lot of student to student interaction. I do have a discussion board, which I don't actually call a discussion board, um, but it's a questions for instructor board. And so, anything that pertains to the course material or um, the course, how it's organized, they can post it on there. Um, so that allows for some discussion, um, but these are students also that I do see on a daily basis in other classes, so that did um, affect how I did my student interaction there. Um, the thing that I most like about my course design is that it's totally new. Does that count? Um, that it's not me lecturing to my students for an hour and 20 minutes and then listening to it. 
um, which kind of goes into what I what I learned and what I want to keep in mind when I'm developing an online course. I didn't really know. I just they gave me this course. They said it's online. I said great. I've got these PowerPoints. I'll record myself talking and put it on there. Um, and I'm sure that they zoned out after like five minutes of that, and there was an hour and 20 minutes of it. Um, and how effective was that really? And so um, something that I've just taken away or that I kept in mind while I was developing this course was, um, one, the level of the course for them and my expectations. Um, I thought that the course mapping was very helpful in making sure that everything that I did was for a purpose and that every assignment actually was to assess a course objective and not just because I needed four big assignments or whatever. Um, that was huge and that really um, kind of, it. These are never, none of these assignments are things that we've done before. Everything is brand new. So um, that was huge in my course mapping and just making sure that it's all meaningful and all connected. Um, and then also that I'm not, that I am being short and concise and that I'm trying to be respectful of their um, time and their attention and all of that good stuff. So they do have a lot that they are responsible for on their own. I mean, they, technically they really need to go read the chapter because I'm not outlining it word for word, right? Um, so they're going to have to be self-disciplined and take some initiative. But um, I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt on that and just make sure that when I designed the course that it was something that would be um, easy for them to understand and that it would be engaging for them. So. Um, as far as implementation from the online courses to other courses, I think the same thing really is that is that course mapping. And it made me realize if I say that I want to, um, you know, do a certain type of assessment in my in my course objectives, how really am I assessing that? And are all of my assignments or all the things that I'm having my students do are they all really actually important, or are they all meaningful in some way or another? or is it just to fill time or space or points or whatever? Um, and so I was discussing that with another faculty member this morning. I think that's what I've taken away from this more than anything else, um, was just to make sure that it all matches up and that I'm not just doing it for haphazard reasons. Um, I guess as far as success as an online instructor, what I would say is that they're engaged and that they're actually taking something away from this course. I don't know how many of you have been a student in an online course, um, I have. I've taken a lot of online courses, and I can tell you that a lot of them, honestly, I walked away from it, and I was like, that was a waste of my time and money, and I didn't learn anything from it, and I don't, and I don't want the, my students to walk away feeling like that. I want them to be able to say, okay, this course really was helpful. That helped me learn this, and it really helped prepare me for my board exams and for what I'm going to be doing in clinical practice in the future. So um, that would really define my success as an online instructor in this course is just that it's meaningful, that it's actually helpful to them, and that it's not one of those courses that they walk away thinking that was a time filler because um, it's not intended to be at all. So um, I think I answered this quickly. Do you guys have questions for me? I really am interested to see how this one drive is going to work out with. Why is it not on there? I, I have no Isn't idea. That weird? I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how this one drive, the way that I set it up, I wish I could show it here, is I set up, um, I think I have six case studies. And so I set up each folder with the case study, and I will just make that folder available to particular students. So every student will not have the same thing. And then they'll be able to submit to that as well. So. I'm excited to yeah. see how it works yeah. out. And when are you teaching? Is this next semester? Yes, next year. It's a spring. It okay. starts in January. So, and it's a full semester course. So we'll see how it goes. And I already warned my students that I've completely revamped from what we did this fall to what is going to happen in the spring, and that I'm very excited for them to go through it and provide me with their feedback. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. See what they say. Right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. All right.